Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today we are over on the land. I wanna show you what we've been doing around the Potager garden. And hopefully we're gonna get some more chicken eggs. We're getting so close. Our girls are 18 weeks, so hopefully they're gonna be laying soon. Let's go see. So like I was saying, the new chickens, the younger chickens are just over 18 weeks old. So most chickens will lay between 16 and 20 weeks. So we know we are very close. We're hoping we've had warm weather the last three days. So we're hoping that that means maybe we're gonna start getting some new eggs. We still just have the two original girls laying um, and two eggs a day is not bad, but it is not quite enough to feed us. Now, when they all start laying, it's gonna be more than enough to feed us because there are 20 hens. So that'll be about 20 eggs a day through the summer, which is a lot. <laughs> but we wanna be able to share, give it away, um, and you know, help other people out as well. So we're really excited. So let's go see. All right, so a little eventful came over here and one chicken was out trying to get back in. So we let her back in and then our very friendly rooster George attacked me, which has never happened before. Um, but also there were some hawks flying around and we just realized that they ran out of food. So I don't know. And I had a pink jacket on. I don't think he liked that. Um, I guess we'll see. Weird day, weird day here in the chicken yard. <laughs> What's going on, girls? What's going on? Hi, big boy. Nope, down, down. So Kevin went to go get them a bunch of snacks. We actually need to go tonight and pick up some more feed. I didn't realize that we were so low. Um, so I'm, I think that maybe George wanted food and that's why he came at me, but um, he got my leg really good. I have to, I'll have to keep you updated. I don't know. I can't look at it right now, but um, it's never good to have a an overly aggressive rooster. Um, never good. So, but Fury today, Fury did so good. He's doing great with his training. Um, he ignored them, even though they're a little bit feisty. So that is a good sign. They see you coming. Huh? They see you coming. Here, you're a good boy. Huh? You're so good in there. You're a good boy. <laughs> so obviously we don't uh, we don't make a habit of feeding our chickens just treats, but they are hungry. Though it's a beautiful day out, and there is plenty of grass and grubs, and they really would be just fine today. But um, we're just gonna make sure that they're nice and full, and then we'll go and grab them some more food tonight um, and get them all situated. So I wanted to just take a couple of minutes as I walk back up to the Potager garden to show you what we were working on all weekend um, to just say thank you. There are a lot of you who are new around here. Um, so I wanted to say thanks for joining our journey. We're really excited to have you here. Um, if you're wondering what we're all about, head on over and watch our vision video. I'll link it down below as well. Um, but that's where Kevin and I really sat down and talked about what our vision is for this land, for our family, for this channel. Um, and more importantly, the impact that we want to have on the world through our children, through the decisions that we make and the things that we do. So um, head on over, check that out. 
Uh, but I wanted to just thank you. Thanks for being here. We are excited to share with you and hopefully you like what you see and stick around. If you haven't already, head on over to Instagram and find us at Uncommon Roots Homestead. Let's go up to the garden. Before we head over to the garden, I thought I would show you guys our little friends and Fury hasn't met them yet. Um, so these are the horses that live next door. Fury obviously will not be bonded to them, but he does need to get used to them because they live right next door. And this is a pasture that he will someday have access to. So I figured, why not? Why not walk him over and see, see what he does? I think it's so cool that like he just sat down and watched them. It's so cool to watch like, I mean this dog, it's in his blood to do this. Like he comes from uh, 70 years of like generations of farm dogs on the dad's side and over 60 years on the mom's side uh, working with farms. His dad came from a line of sheep uh, guardians and his mom uh, dairy guardians. So. It, it, like this is in his blood and the first thing he did when he saw those horses is sit down to watch them um and that's just so cool it's so cool to me that like animals just know what their job is and thank goodness right because if we if we had to teach this dog how to protect i'm not sure about that we're just, it's taken enough to teach him not to eat the chickens <laughs> oh, which is still a work in progress but um, anyways, let's go up to the garden. Okay, so I am up at the Potager garden. We did so much work this weekend. Um, I was laughing with my friend Jill, who a lot of you know, uh, and I told her, you know, it's funny because we spent like 16 hours here over the weekend and you can barely, barely tell, but we can tell. So what we were doing this weekend is leveling these beds all six of those. Um, if you go and check out some of our previous Potager Garden tours, uh, you'll see that they were very unlevel. Um, and then we started prepping them. So the way that we're prepping our garden beds um, is obviously we built them and then we leveled them out and then we put cardboard down. So the cardboard is kind of going to act as a weed barrier. It's going to help kill everything that was underneath, like all the grass and the weeds that were already there. Um, and it's going to help them from, you know, coming up and permeating the entire garden bed this year. And then we're laying, this isn't done, we're laying a layer of sticks. Um, so what that does is like layering organic material, similar to composting, um, it's just gonna help us to, frankly, save some costs so that we're not filling each of these beds all the way with compost. What we're gonna do is do the cardboard and then the sticks, and then we're gonna do mulch actually, um, wood chips. We have a friend who owns a, um, a tree service, and so he has offered to drop all of his chips off here. We don't obviously need all of them, but a couple of loads are, are all that we need. Um, so we'll put those on top of the sticks and then we'll put compost on top. And what happens is over time, these sticks and the cardboard and the wood chips, it's all gonna break down and turn to compost itself. So really cool how that works. Um, but also it's a great way to kind of save some money. If you're building a garden bed and you're thinking like, gosh, the bigger or the more beds I have, the more money that's gonna be because filling them with compost, like that can take a lot. I mean, can you imagine filling all of these just all of those beds, plus we have those three back there and we still don't even have our big beds. So I have a 15 foot bed that's gonna go right here on the end. Um, and then I have two 15 foot beds over there and then a 24 foot bed that's going back here. Um, that's a lot, that would be, sorry, that would be a lot of compost. So it definitely saves you some money and it also is gonna create a healthier environment because as those things break down, you're kind of allowing nature to take its course. Um, which is really cool. And that's the whole point of everything that we're doing. So we started that process. So as you can see, these are all level. We leveled them with themselves, not each other. Um, so you can, 
you can do this a million different ways, but we were looking for the most economical and the quickest. So this space is obviously very uneven. Um, and instead of worrying about like each bed being level with each other, I think from a visual perspective, like if we stand back here so you can see it all, um, as long as they are level with themselves, it looks good visually in my opinion. Um, and then we decided to leave these metal ones unlevel. We could have leveled them out, but it's a little bit more difficult and it would be a little bit more obvious as we start adding compost and things. So I kind of like that they're on the slope and they are kind of level with each other. So um, it doesn't bother me that much. So we did all of that this weekend and we got those built. So those actually, those three are new. Um, I still have the longer beds that I was telling you about. And then we're gonna do our potatoes. So my in-ground garden, we actually moved, we had an apple tree right there. We went ahead and moved him this weekend also because I just felt like this space is so flat up here. I wanna use it for the garden. It seems like a waste to put anything else there. So what we're gonna do woo, um, is I'm gonna put that one long bed right there. That'll be a 24 foot bed. And then in front of that, I'm gonna do all of my potatoes. And then I'm guessing that'll take me to about where I'm standing. And I still have all of this space back here um, and it's shaded right now, but actually it's mostly shaded by that holly tree and she's coming down. So this gets a lot of sun and in the summer it's gonna be, I mean, hours and hours of sun, probably eight to 12 hours of sunlight in this area. Um, so then I've got the three perennial beds there in front of those is where I want that lavender patch. Um, and then behind those in that big, that big empty area right there. That tree is, that one is coming down. Um, that's the hibiscus tree and the rest of that area all the way over to by the, where the holly tree is. That's all gonna be my in-ground squash and melon. So a lot going on. Um, if you're in zone 7A with the first or last frost date somewhere towards the end of April, um, you're probably on the same schedule as I am. And what that means is that I am trying to get all of this done as soon as possible because I need to get these beds filled and prepped that first week of March because you don't want to prep and then plant in the same period of time. Um, it's really helpful to prep the beds, let them sit for a little, let them get a couple of rains, let them kind of like compact so you know if you need to add any more soil. Um, and then also it helps all those like microorganisms kind of come to life and start doing their thing before you start adding plants in. So it's a good time once you've prepped your beds to do any soil testing if you were gonna do any. If you're starting from scratch like we are, we're probably not gonna bother with that um, because we know where we get our compost, it's high quality compost. We're not gonna, um, we, don't, we don't really run the risk of having to test. But if you um, are maybe just amending beds, this is a good time to take your soil test, figure out what your beds are um, deficient in, if anything, and then start adding those nutrients back as you amend the soil. A lot of times adding compost helps that, but if you have like, if you don't rotate your crops and you're growing the same thing in the same place every year, you might end up with like nitrogen deficiencies um, or things like that, that you can actually amend and correct on the front end. Or like if your soil is too acidic, whatever. Um, root vegetables help that a lot. If you, in the fall, plant some root vegetables or like cover crop. Um, but if you didn't cover up your beds and didn't do anything and they're just kind of like sitting from last year, you're gonna wanna amend them. So a soil test is definitely worth it right now. But my goal is to do all of that, um, get the beds all finished. Well, my goal is a fun way to put it. Kevin's goal is, <laughs> the goal I have given Kevin is for him to have all of the beds finished being built uh, in the next week so that two weeks of now, that first week of March, I can get everything filled. We'll go get um, actually a whole truckload of compost and then have that amended. We're working with Green Heron here locally, which is a company I've talked about before. I'll actually link them below as well. Um, Got to keep track of all these things I'm promising to link. But they do home composting. That's really cool. If you live in an urban area and you want to compost, but you really don't have the means to kind of deal with it, they help, they help you do that, which is really cool. I and mean, there might be a company like them in your area if you're outside of kind of the zone that they service. Um, we are a drop location for them, but they drop compost that isn't fully composted. So 
what that means for us is that we actually put it back with the mulch and we add it to our own compost pile. And so we just started being a drop for them. We probably won't be ready to use that compost until next season, um, mostly because we just won't have enough to amend these beds. So what we wanna do is we'll bring in a truckload of compost, finish building the beds, finish uh, doing the um, cardboard and the sticks and then the wood chips and then put that compost on top. Um, and then for the in-ground areas, we're doing it a little bit different. Instead of like tilling this area up, we're actually gonna lay cardboard down. We're gonna lay sticks down. We're gonna actually like build it up like a bed. A um, few reasons that we're doing that. First, there used to be a house on this property um, right here. So what that means is that there's a lot going on under the soil that we just don't wanna mess with. We don't, we don't wanna mess with it. So we're just gonna build up and plant that way. And then over time, as it breaks down, we're actually just gonna be adding density to the soil. Um, and so we won't have to like add uh, a ton of compost every year. We'll just kind of add a top layer from what we have, but we're gonna do that in those areas with the lavender, the potatoes, and also the squash and melon. So that'll all be kind of built up, but not in a structure. Like we're not gonna put um, a border around them, I guess, so to speak. And then in between these beds, we're going to be doing uh, rock. So mowing, if, if you've ever had a garden before and you didn't put anything down in between your beds, you know that it is a nightmare when you get full into harvest season. And not only do you have all your vegetables to harvest, but you also have a ton of grass and weeds. We don't want that. So in between in all of these walkways, we're actually going to lay down some weed mat um, and then put some stone on top to just kind of bring it all together. I also bought a, an arbor that I bought some red climbing roses to go up over to kind of make an entry point for the garden, which is gonna be really beautiful. Um, and if you've been following us for a little bit, you know that we decided to go without a fence around the garden this year. So we have a fence around the whole property, um, but that doesn't usually keep wildlife out. So we'll see, could be a horrible decision. We might end up putting up a fence in the middle of the season, but we're gonna start without and try it out. Uh, and then the only other change that I've made is instead of putting my raspberries here in front of the 24 foot bed, I'm actually going to put them, I think I told you this in a video earlier this week, but um, we're gonna put them down there by the blueberries. So now we've got this nice orchard row that'll create a really beautiful visual barrier. And then down at the bottom, we've got those blueberries I showed you guys. There's 18 of them that just goes down across the fence line. We're gonna go about five to six feet behind those and do a row of raspberries with some support so that they, they kind of sprawl and vine a little bit. So that is the plan. Kind of a check-in on the Potager garden. It's crazy to me that in a matter of weeks, we're gonna be doing garden tours um, where I'm actually gonna be showing you like what's in the garden. I mean, I guess I could kind of do that today, but all we've got is onions and garlic. My onions, they're looking pretty good. They'll start to perk up here really soon as the weather continues to get warmer and we get some rain. Um, I have a little bit of some kind of a pest issue. I think I told you guys about this in another video. I don't know what is doing that. It's really driving me crazy though because it waited until these onions were a nice size to start digging them up. So if you have any ideas on what would eat my onions, let me know in the comments below. Um, but my garlic is pretty much uh, unscathed. There's a couple of little spots maybe, but uh, it looks really good. And then I also have elephant garlic down here. Um, that looks really good. It's getting really big. You can see Look how nice that is. Those are gonna be wonderful. I'm uh, fingers crossed for my passion vine. I don't know if he's gonna make it, um, but we'll see. That is what's going on in the garden right now. Um, Fury is angry. He's full of fury that I've left him over there this whole time. Um, but I'm gonna collect him, go give him a walk around the property, and then I think we're gonna head home. I've got some soup cooking waiting for us. But friends, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Um, spring is coming. I know I was talking about that in our last video, but this is proof of it. I mean, look at these, look at these, just out of nowhere. Look at how beautiful those are. Spring is coming and I cannot wait to experience it with you. Fury, tell our friends goodbye. You tell them goodbye? <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>